Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Power Law Investor. Today is the 17th of December, 2024, Tuesday. And for this video, we're going to be talking exclusively about CASPA. And what I want to show you guys is some of the work that I've been done in trying to extend the power law into dealing with some of the changes in the CASPA protocol that have taken place, particularly the introduction of KRC20 memes in, on September 15th, and how that has thrown off the power law and my efforts to compensate for that. And again, this should uh, not be taken as financial advice. It's only for educational purposes only. So as I, as I make this video, Bitcoin is at 106K and a half, and CASPA is just trading below 14 and a half cents. And uh, what I want to show you guys is, let's just go over a quick basics of the power law first. The power law basically shows us that if we take the log in the x-axis and the log of the y-axis of a price by time graph, we end up with a straight line when we take a linear best fit through it with a pretty high R squared fit. In this case, it's 0.94, and here's the equation over here. And then when we go ahead and extrapolate that into a linear linear plot, these straight lines end up becoming curved. And we have... Uh, Assuming that the future is like the past, we can end up with some predictions on what we expect the value to be. So based on that, we would have an expected value of about 90 cents in a year's time over here, right? That's what this graph is showing. And these three lines over here are simply at a 30, 40, and 50% discount to the trend line, which have been historically relevant. Now, what happened in September 15? Let's bring up the plot over here. I think it was, here we go, this one here. Uh, let's jump in this one over here. Right, so before September 15th, if you look back over here, we'll see that the number of, let me suggest so, we'll see that the actual number of fees that were taking place in terms of CASPA were pretty low. All right, and then from September 15th onwards, we started having a lot more fees. And let's just zoom in into that. Let's call it three months. And we can look at it on the log log plot over here. So you can see that these fees, which were near zero, now are half a million, 75K, up to 25 million in certain cases, and then 2.6 million and so forth. So these are because there's a lot of meme coins being traded across the Casper network and the miners are now getting additional fees because there's a fee paid for these transactions that are taking place and when minting is taking place, etc. right? So what that did was miners, which were first getting a lot lower fees, right? Just the fees bouncing around over here in terms of the Casper that they were getting are now getting a lot more. And what that means is that they're able to sell these additional CASPA uh, tokens that they're, or additional CASPA that they are being rewarded. And that has increases the amount of selling pressure and that pushes the market downwards. So we can sort of see that start to happen in certain graphs over here. Let me, uh, let's look at this one over here, right? So if we look over here, we can sort of see this begin to happen around September the 15th. And you can see this beginning of this downward trend over here that bounces back somewhat, but that's when it started. And in fact, one way to look at this more easily is looking at what happens when we compare Casper to the rest of the altcoin market. So here's September 15th, and you can see we have this downward spiral that starts, right? So from this point onwards, this downward pressure relative to the rest of the market. You look at CASPA relative to Bitcoin, and again, you see the same thing around September 15th. This is when things started to change. Now, they've stabilized somewhat after that over here now, but you can see that uh, we had sort of a significant downward movement take place before around September 15th. Okay. And now the question that we want to ask ourselves is, okay, given that we have all these fees kicking in from September the 15th, has that invalidated the power law? And what, what can we do about this? Or how can we use this to make reasonable predictions? 
And what I wanted to show you guys is some of the work that I've done on this to try and help understand what's going on, right? Uh, my assumption was now that we have enough data here from about September 15th to December 17th today, what is the amount of issuance or what is the amount, the additional amount, the delta that is being generated in terms of the total fees paid in terms of CASPA? And I ended up with a value of about 1.5 million CASPA per day. Okay. And using that, my, as, my assumption was that it's going to increase the supply by a certain percentage. And I just did some simple math around this. And instead of having a power law like this, a smoothly power law that was smoothly going up, I programmed and made some assumptions and came up with what I called a breakpoint analysis. All right. And the breakpoint analysis here is showing that these were the trend lines before. All right, you're bouncing around here and then you came across September 15th and then you had a shift from this down to this. And I estimated that the price shift was about 18% given that we had an increase in supply of about 22%. Now, how did the 22% come about? Well, it's looking at the average daily issuance, which was about 7 million or so now, and looking at what percentage increase we would have with about a 1.5 million CASPA increase. So if you just want to do simple math, if it was 1.4, it would be about 22%. So it's a little bit above 22%. So it's a little about 20, above 22%, 22%, right? And then what I did was I assumed that we would just be able to, to shift everything down and the underlying trends would continue. Now, is that a safe assumption? I don't think it's a bad assumption. Uh, and it is maybe simplifying things quite a bit. But let's assume for a minute that's what's happening. And of course, there could be some variation here because the supply is not constant. And many of you will be able to find uh, easy ways to nitpick about it, like, oh, it could be done better this way, it could be done better that way. But this is just my way of looking at it without spending too much time getting into the weeds of understanding what could happen, right? And so let's look at the overall assumptions, right? The overall assumption is before we were looking at a trend value today of about uh, before it would be 30 cents. We're now looking at a trend value of about 25 cents. Okay, so we've had a price shift of about 20% down. And the estimated return now with this break is about 74 cents in a year's time, whereas before it was more like 90 cents. All right, and so the expected return has gone down from 503% down to about 400%. So that's still a pretty good return, but it's less than what it was before. But I did want to highlight a couple of interesting things to you guys about this sort of analysis, right? And the analysis is that if you take this to be true, the kind of analysis that I've done is roughly correct. In the past, we've discussed how in the worst case scenario, we've hit about a minus 50% drawdown from the, from the trend line, and then we've bounced off that. Now, the 50% always seemed a little arbitrary to me, but when I did this analysis, I was kind of surprised to see that even with the prices in November 4th and November 3rd, in which we dropped down almost to 10 cents, a little bit below, we essentially went down to the adjusted, what I'm calling the break adjusted minus 50% line. So before the minus 50% line was here, it now drops down to here. So from the purple, it becomes the orange, the green becomes the purple and the light green becomes the light purple, right? So you can see what these different legends are. So everything has been downshifted. The reason why I think this is pretty powerful is because it gives an approximation as to what is actually going on with the market right now. And why do we have the power law taking place? Well, it's a mixture of what's going on with the miners, the minimum price that the miners are able to sell at. But using these very simple assumptions, we've incorporated the additional revenue or the additional profits that the miners are making and seeing how they would their break-even price is likely going to change. And that's what forms the right the bottom, right? Because the miners won't sell unless they're profitable or they won't produce unless they're profitable, give or take, uh, because they've got to invest in some stuff. But over the longer period of time, that bottom line should hold as a support level. And so if that is true, and again, it could be just a coincidence, you're now looking at sort of an adjusted model of how the power law goes, all right? And what is that saying? Typically between the minus 40 and minus 50% below the trend line is a good place to buy. So if we use that and we use today's values, we'll see that we're looking at December the 17th, anything below about 15.2 cents, 
to between 12.6 cents or so is a pretty good time to be buying. It seems unlikely to dip below that. Now, could it dip below that? Yes. But what I'm saying with the simple adjustment that we've made, we're still able to see that CASPA is following these dynamics of this power law, right? And could there be other complicating factors? There could be. But for now, at least for me, this gives me a lot more confidence in buying opportunities for CASPA below 15 and a half cents and you know, 12 and a half cents. So those would be good times to buy. And as we looked at it earlier today, we're now trading at about 14 and a half cents. I'll just refresh this. So that's likely gonna be a pretty good time and a good price point to buy. Of course, it could drop down further, but based on this analysis that we're doing over here, that should provide reasonable returns. And those reasonable returns are in the region of about 400%. Because when we ask ourselves, why is CASPA so unique along with Bitcoin? Yes, it's a proof of work, but there is some sort of organic growth taking place, organic interplay between the demand and the supply. And even with the KRC20 memes, yeah, we may have a shift, but I don't think the underlying demand supply dynamics have broken down completely. So this is my way of quantifying some of the action that we've been seeing. I don't think there's any reason to panic. And in this channel, we continue to buy, buy on a daily, uh, daily cost average into buying Caspa and Bitcoin, which are power law assets. And uh, for those of us that are looking for a little more quantitative reassurance, I've kept it very simple here. There are, of course, many sophisticated ways of doing this, but basically saying, look, there's the additional of 1.5 million Caspa of the supply going to the miners every day. How is that likely going to increase price? Well, when supply goes up, price is going to go down. How much is the price going to go down? You increase the supply of about 20%, price goes down by about 20% more or less. And how is that going to change the underlying power law? Uh, so this is what we're looking at. Wanted to share this with you guys. And of course, as always, um, like and subscribe and share with your friends and leave your comments down below so maybe I can clarify some concepts uh, further. Looking forward to them. Thanks a lot.